Hey, toy fans around the world. Let's talk about yellow toys. Yellow toys? Why specifically yellow? I mean, what's so great about yellow? Well, my name is Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. I'm your host here on the Spectre Creative channel. And I'm not just talking about yellow toys that you go and, you know, pick up at the toy store or the big box store that happen to be the color yellow. And I'm also not talking about toys that might, say, starting off as one color, but then you can turn them yellow because they have a cool feature, like they're reversible. Like my raincoat! No, what I'm talking about is this kind of yellow toy. A toy that starts off white, but then over time, over the decades, over the ages, it goes from being bright white to, well, a lot less than that. Whether it's yellow or brown or discolored, it's not what we as adult collectors want our toys to turn into. And it's become the bane of many of us who collect our toys long-term, watching beloved collectibles and playthings from our childhood and from our adulthood slowly turn from bright white to bright yellow. So why does this happen? Well, a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, it's because you might keep them, you know, under certain light conditions, or other people still see this happening even with toys stored away in closets. Well, it's because it has nothing to do with it being exposed to light. It actually has to do with what the toy is made of that contributes to it turning from white to yellow. And it's all about when what it's made of meets this little guy. Meet Mr. Oxygen. Yeah, I know, this cartoon character is actually called Mr. Oxygen, what can I tell you? But he represents oxygen. And what's that toy made of? Well, it's probably made of plastic. Now, there are multiple kinds of plastic that are used to make toys. Some of them are more flexible, some of them are more sturdy. The main plastic type that we get with action figures and dolls is called ABS. This stands for, oh, do I even want to try this, Icrotona tri buddha Tyene styrene. Yeah, okay, I probably screwed that up 12 times to midnight, but the point is they're long, complicated words that stand for A or become ABS, which is a lot easier to say. So ABS comes in those little pellets or also in long strings. You can also get it in sheets, and it's melted down, put into a plastic injection molding machine, and becomes a toy. Well, the problem is ABS over time deteriorates and can actually not explode, but it can, well, I don't want to say catch on fire, but it requires a flame retardant to keep it from disintegrating, shall we say. I don't want people to think their toys are going to explode on them because they're not. But ABS does need to have a flame retardant added to it in order to maintain structural integrity. So flame retardants help protect ABS by keeping the heat and the oxygen from colliding. Now, the way you keep uh, ABS from melting down and catching on fire by itself is adding bromine. So bromine is poured into the liquid plastic when it's, well, when the plastic is melted down in liquid form in the factories, and this combination of bromine and ABS plastic keeps the plastic from catching fire and slowly disintegrating. Again, it's not going to explode on your shelf. I don't want to get that across at all, but bromine is what keeps the ABS stable because it's a flame retardant. It also works as a liquid and as a dye, but it's the flame retardant properties of bromine which are very important to the toy making process. And when bromine is added to liquid ABS plastic, well, this is what keeps the ABS from, or rather provides, a flame retardant shield, if you will, on a molecular level. And that's where we have to go. So here's the other issue. Bromine, on a molecular level, when it is exposed to oxygen, well, it turns into bromine dioxide, or known as the Lewis structure. And when bromine is combined with oxygen molecules, it creates a unique chemical bond between the molecules, which alters the state of the ABS plastic. So this is why we're seeing the plastic turn yellow. It's this little guy right here. He is the culprit, or she, or it. I don't know. Does, does a molecule have gender? I don't think it does. It. Let's go with it. So essentially, without the bromine, 
well, you've got bigger problems. So we're either going to accept yellowing toys, white turning to yellow, or much worse consequences. And that is why, for safety reasons, toy companies add the bromine to liquid ABS plastic to keep them from imploding and long-term. All right, so what can you do about this? How is it that you can keep your toys from becoming yellow or more so reverse the process? And that's what you can do. So here's a group of toys from my collection that I pulled out that have gotten some nice yellowing from the bromine exposed to oxygen over the years and forming bromine dioxide molecules. So let's break apart those molecular bonds inside of the plastic in order to remove the yellowing. So first you take off heads or vests, anything else that you may not want to get wet, although, you know, the head is still made of plastic. I just like to remove extra parts. Then we're going to go in and we're going to get hydrogen peroxide, just regular off-the-shelf hydrogen peroxide. This bottle, I think, I believe I bought it at Walmart last week. So, yeah, you can get it anywhere. Then you're going to take the hydrogen peroxide, pour it into a mason jar with the figures inside. And it's important to completely submerge the figures in liquid, so the liquid needs to come up above the figures. Then you need to seal the mason jar tight so oxygen cannot get inside. That's why mason jars work so well, because they have a seal that allows them to be airtight. Very important to the process. All right, so once we have our figures immersed in hydrogen peroxide, you're going to put it out in the sun for three to five days, and you want direct sunlight to hit the jar. As the sunlight goes through the hydrogen peroxide, it creates a molecular compound that breaks down the bond between the bromine and the oxygen molecules that have formed over the years. And by breaking down this chemical bond between molecules, you're going to restore the characters, the figures, to the original white coloring that the plastic had. So after three days, I unscrew my airtight container. I use my tongs here to keep my fingers from getting too much chemical on them. And boom, there you go, R2-D2, nice and white. And uh, Han Solo, Han Solo Stormtrooper, nice and white. So. Wow, there you go. Reverse chemical reaction. We'll wash them off there to make sure we get all the hydrogen peroxide off because we wouldn't want extra chemicals on our figures. But now you can restore them to your collection. And this will pretty much work with any figure that is yellowing. You can restore it to its nice white golden or golden white brightness and uh, have your collection back good as new. So here we have uh, my three figures, nice and bright, just to show you what they looked like before. Yep, that's some ugly yellowing there. And yeah, you'll notice the yellowing is not on every part, and that's because some parts have more bromine in them and some less. That's why. Not every part has an equal amount of the bromine when it's mixed with the liquid plastic at the vendor when the plastic is melted down. And they're all restored thanks to the uh, wonderful healing properties of sunlight and hydrogen peroxide in an airtight mason jar. Pretty cool. And that is why toys turn yellow and how to turn them back. And now you know something. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please do give the channel a like and a subscription. It tells YouTube to share it with more people. That's how their algorithm works. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video only on the Spectre Creative channel here on YouTube.